Welcome to Gambling with an Edge. And now, here are Bob and Richard. Good afternoon. Welcome to Gambling with an Edge. I'm Bob Dancer. And I'm Richard Munchkin. Our guest today is known as Math Boy. It's a repeat visit from last week. He has a PhD in math and has uh, been beating casinos for a while until he retired. Mel, math Boy, welcome back to Gambling with an Edge. Thanks, guys. Pleasure to be here. So now you're back on the air, even though we're taping this uh, 15 minutes after we ended the previous one. Did you change clothes so our audience doesn't know that, you're, that it was done on the same day? No. Well, like I told these guys, you know, before, uh, I've known people, though, on uh, on Pawn Stars, they do, they tape like six, you know, and they're special, they tape like six in a row or something like that. They tell them to bring six different clothes so that people on the television don't realize that, A, it's staged, and B, they're filming everything one, soccer, one after another. But, no, I, I've just been, you know, standing here in the same, like, jeans t-shirt and so and jeans and no shoes so <laughs> well i, I okay. changed baseball hats so <laughs> yes um the 007 had a promotion way back when where for both the double o and the seven for four hours they paid double on those how did that work you're talking about uh, the yeah, you had to relax. So what would yes. happen is the casino on net, I think it was April of 2001. I'm not sure, though. But they did the promotion. They advanced, did a couple of weeks in advance where they go, hey, usually it pays 35 to 1 or 36 to 1 or whatever for if you get like a double zero or a seven. But just for two hours, it pays double. So you get 71 instead of 35 to 1, <laughs> both of those. And you're thinking like, it took me a while to figure out, what the hell? You know what I mean? Like, what the hell? And I guess what they <laughs> thought, this is the only thing I'd come up with, they thought that people would not be more likely to bet on double zero and seven. So if you just randomly bet all the numbers and they double paid on that, they, they're they just giving an even game. That's what they're thinking, you know. But what? You know, so, but it was kind of funny because like a week in advance, this is the people online were going like lying about it. Oh, I tested this and I like, and I didn't, uh, and I, and I didn't hit double zero seven for a long period of time. I think they're doing so. People were lying, trying to get other people off the play. And you actually had to like pump up your money to get in the casino because what they did is they just gave you all the bonus money after the game had ended. And, uh, it went off and we had like six people in our group and you're just fucking hitting like, you know, draw, 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 you know, or, like, or whatever. And I think our group of six made, you know, a couple hundred grand. And overall, the casino lost four grand, four million dollars in two hours. And given the online, online groups and the message boards, I could, you know, and other APs that were not on that, I could, ju- I could follow about like three thousand, three million of it. There's this one guy called How Safe Is You that the story is that they had to make and he made so much money, they had to make like an extra account because they didn't have enough digits in his balance. They could only have six figures of digits, and he had, like, over a million dollars. And uh, that was, like, and everybody got paid, and they did great, and they did the stand-up thing. They, they, they paid everybody, and then they used this promotion. Look, we paid out this on this promotion. It was great. And it was insane. I mean, like, this one guy, I remember he bought, like, a Dodge Viper at the time. It was, like, an $80,000 car, and he takes a picture of it, it's obvious that this guy is living in a freaking apartment building and he's parking the Dodge Viper outside. You know, it's like, you know, where are your things? And there's, and all these kids were like, college students are playing. They make like, you know, like $200,000 in a day. And it kind of ruined their life. Because before that, they're making $500 an hour. And you're like, great, $500,000 $500 an hour. What could go bad? But then they make, you know, $100,000 an hour or something. And then they go, oh, well, I'm not going to bother grinding at $500 an hour with minimal risk. I'm just going to wait for another 007. And like all these, and then like all these kids, I was like amazed. I was like gobsmacked. You know, they graduate. And I was thinking, well, great. Now you got more time to play. Who cares? They go from making like a quarter million dollars a year, $200,000 a year, to making $50,000 a year in a real job, like eight hours a day. 
And it's like, dude, you could have like just taken like an extra year and made like an extra quarter million dollars. Think about how your life would have changed when you're like, fine. Can you imagine if you're 21 and you know, by 23, you got $750,000 just sitting there. You know, you, your life is set. But this 007, it was too good. And people just, they've got like, you know, I'm, I'm sure you know people, they got like the satiation point where they make enough money. They go, it's okay. And they don't realize, you know, maybe you should work a little more, you know, like, I don't know, Richard, you know, APs that take December off because they've made enough in the net other 11 months or not. <laughs> no, I, I haven't run across that. That's, uh, um, although, I, you know, I have had uh, um, discussions with people who are specifically machine players where there's W2Gs involved who have ha- who've had that kind of, those kind of discussions about, depending on where their tax situation is, they may stop sometime in December because they don't want to hit more W2Gs or something. Um, well, but, you, know, you know, it's not the more W2Gs, it's that you go to a higher tax bracket. Yeah, well, yes, I, I, yeah. I think of that as like a, that's, I, I frame that as like a lost rebate question, you know, because if you, oh, wait a second, so let's see you're right at the border, and let's say you flip a coin for like $1,000, Wait, let me let me think it out. If you win, you get paid say seven hundred, and if you lose, you only cost you and it costs you. No, I guess it's the reverse. No, I, I take it back. So I guess it's 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 bad. Yeah, it's bad to go for variance when you're near the when you're near the border. But it's so it's often so minor, you know that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's overstated. It's kind of cool mathematically, but it's, it's it may be overstated. Yeah, I can understand where they're coming from. And how many APs, to be honest, completely tell their taxes because there's so much cash? I mean, I always did, but... You know, I always I, did because it was always going through net teller and and through bank accounts. And, you know, I... But, I you, you, know, know. you know, one thing I found out that a lot of people don't, they hear and they think it's crazy, is that if you don't pay your taxes, you'll never be rich. Because if you cash, they think, oh, I'm not paying tax. I got more money. But you just look at it as something to spend, and you'll spend it. And it's like, you know, that's why that's why criminals want to launder money because they want to invest it and think of it as whatever. And we're used to thinking of it as like to hammer the casinos more, but people will buy some hundred thousand dollar car. Or, I don't know. They just go through money on stupid things. Well, and, and also got- after a certain point, you don't need more money for a bankroll to play in casinos, right? So if it's sitting in a safe deposit box, it's just being wasted. It's, I mean, yeah. you're not, you could. Um, well, I mean, when, when, you, when you're whole car king, <laughs> if you're playing machines, believe me, I could find, I could find games that need like $5 million. You know what I mean? Oh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but yeah, if you're playing, if you're playing like the whole card stuff or, you know, yeah, you're right. You max out. But, but stuff. Stuff that I did near the end, you know, like I wouldn't mind having an extra million dollars in bankroll. But my my, you know, my, you, my my thought was always if you retire, the whole point of a gambler is it kind of sucks because you have no retirement fund, but it's called your bankroll. So when you quit, you'd better have like a million dollars or something to retire, or you fail. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, you know, when you were saying that these these guys uh, were ruined because they wouldn't, you know, go back to working for five hundred dollars an hour or whatever, um, you know, I, I, the online gambling was very much like uh, blackjack, where when multiple decks came in, a lot of the single deck players quit because they said, "Oh, blackjack's no good anymore," and and online gambling went through those phases too where it looked like it, where it wasn't as good as it used to be. And I remember at one point I had stopped because the games were not as good as they used to be. Online gambling I'm talking about. And a friend of mine um had basically gone broke a, a, because he was a traveling musician and um and I said, "Well, look, you know, you could go do this and you could make, you know, a quick ten thousand dollars in a month or two just doing your own account grabbing sign up bonuses. And he he said, Well, if you can do that, why aren't you doing it? I was like, Oh, I used to do it. <laughs> no, no, I said I used to do it, but you know, I got out of it. 
And and then I started thinking, I was like, well, wait a minute. Yeah, he's right. Why, why, why don't I go back and do it again? And, you know, and yeah, it just, it, it ended up becoming better than ever, you know, but. Um, so I've got this friend that I think he's recently retired. You know, I, I see him on Facebook. I haven't seen him in years. He moved to Vegas. But there are these places called like Captain Hook and All Slot. And they both had like deposit four thousand, get one thousand. I think get to play through twelve grand. It's like really easy money. And this guy, this guy, he would like he would just play like we call hooks and slots. He'd just play hooks, and he'd get like four thousand, one thousand every client. He'd go, look, I'm making like you know eight hundred fifty dollars, and it takes me two hours. I'm like, why don't you do all slots and make another hundred eight hundred fifty dollars? No, 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 no. I just want to do like hooks is easier. Oh. It's like, <laughs> what the hell? You know, if I said his name. He'd, be, he'd probably listen to this podcast and he'd get pissed off at me, but it was just so funny. <laughs> that's, that's how crazy it was back then. Yeah. yeah. There was promotion at Diamond Jacks in Vicksburg. I actually don't know where Diamond Jacks is. Is that where the Harris used to be and several generations later downtown? No. Uh, where was Diamond Jacks? Harris is different because you know, I haven't prepared, but I got a funny story about Harrah's, actually, that place that was Harrah's. That they changed. Uh-huh. And actually, Bob, you were there like a week before, I heard. And they had some prom- yes. promotions. Yeah, well, and they then, had double royals. And I was on yeah. a quarter uh, hundred play machine. Yeah, so I went there, and they there. had changed it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, no, I played it, did okay, and I couldn't make it back the following week. Sent a buddy and his wife to lock up the machine for as long as they could, and they did, but forgot to hit a royal that day. And, uh, and then eventually the casino closed it. Um, for, but from midnight to 8, to from 8 a.m., it went on, and at 8 a.m., the casino manager says, I told you not to do on those machines. So, end the promotion. But, uh, so that was what I did. I'm, I'm right now not remembering the name of that casino. Maybe you do. I don't, it, was it Horizon? I don't, I don't know. But I, I actually yes, it I was sat Horizon. next to your friend. I sat next to your friend. And one thing he didn't tell you that was so fucking painful is that they had made hand pays at $100. Ooh. Wow. And, and you get like $112 like every 30 end. And they would break down 20, 20, 20, 20, 5, 5, 5, 5, 1, 1, 1, 1. And they're like, oh. Right? And then I was like, this is so painful. And I went, but I, I'm not sure if it was the same weekend, but I remember they had like this, like, you know, I, I went there and they had this like leather jacket on, you know, for display if you get so many points. And I'm like, well, this is pretty cool. I, you know, you figure well, that's a trigger. If I earn the leather jacket, it's probably enough to get whatever the mailer they've got. So I go to the $5 jack machine, the high limit, and play $5 jack. And I hit 20 grand, right? This is, in, this is engraved. It's like 9 o'clock in the morning, whatever. And then like 10 minutes after they pay me, this guy walks in. And it was winter. And you could kind of tell he came in because he kind of had like the aura of cold around him. And he's like, oh, is that 20 grand on this machine too? Like they didn't know they could pay 20 grand. And I just hit like a, a full house. I go like, oh, that's 625 or whatever. Because I, I didn't blink. And I guess they, they called in the, the, you know, the casino manager from out from his home to verify this $20,000 because they were freaking out about the 20 grand. So I earn enough for the, for the stupid jacket. And I'm like, okay, you know, just like all APs, you know, I'm like, I'll take the XL, right? Because free buffet. And they're like, they go back in the back, they won't have any XL. I'm like, okay, I'll take a large. They don't want to have any large. I'm like, okay, what do you have? And they go, we got a medium. And I go, okay, I'll take the medium jacket. Take, and they take the freaking display jacket and they hand it to me. So this is a giveaway and all they had was a one. <laughs> all they had was one left like my wife. Had- boy- Say, I'm sorry, what? Did they, did they have plenty more, but the others had all been one, or they only had one to start with? I, I guess they only had one to start with. Because, I mean, come on, you're, you're like, you're in Vicksburg. This is a dump, you know. That people, they, they were actually, they're like, 
you know, I actually went up and they go, oh, you just got your card to get. I go, yeah. They go, well, you couldn't have earned enough points to go check it. And they're like, oh, you earned enough points. So believe me, they, they had not given away a bunch of them. <clears throat> but they, they only had the one at the time. <laughs> it's so freaking hilarious, you know. And it was a medium, you know. So they, they weren't used to, like, usual casino employees. Crazy. So, Diamond Jacks in Vicksburg. Okay. Well, Diamond Jacks is something, it was something on the order of magnitude. For this day, we pay you double for all WTs between, say, 1,200 and 2,500. So, if you hit more than 2,500, they just pay you an extra 2,500. And they had the optimal game, which gives 40% return, and you just hit them constantly. But I don't want to say what that is because, you know. And we had a crew of six or eight people that knew about it. We didn't always play together, but we knew about it. And we split. And uh, I was organizing it. And I, I know a little more about slots. And I'm like, some other guys had the video poker locked down. I said, look, they got $25 slots. I knew that red, white, and blue pays back roughly 25% of its total returns on, on W2Gs. And Double Diamond pays back, I forget, something like 15% on W2Gs. Just because I had done a lot of mapping over the years. And, and I knew what they look, what the distributions look like. So I, I tell them, look, you guys do all the, the optimal game and I'll play the hedge game, which is, uh, you know, which has, you know, ooh, the 25% edge slot. So it's like it starts in, you know, grave. And then, like, you know, there's only, like, two slot events in the whole casino. Everybody fucking hits. They move to another, and then they just move to another machine, and they all hit. They move to another machine, and they all hit. And they're going crazy. There's, like, 30 jackpots to pay. There's two people, and they're freaking out. And it's like, <laughs> what the hell is going on? And, it, you know, and then... And then, you know, then they had, like, the finally, it's like 10 o'clock or whatever, new people came in. They just started 86ing people. By some, I have no freaking idea how my wife did not get 86, but she didn't get 86, but all these other people got 86 in the middle of promotion. But I didn't get 86 because I was playing a $25 slot. What kind of freaking moron plays a $25 slot? But I had hit, like, big sevens on the red, white, and blue for 1250 and moved over to double diamond, and it's like, Double diamond, double diamond, double diamond, like 20, 40 grand, whatever it was, 40, 20 grand. And I was like, yes. You know, so I hit 20 grand on a $25 slot. But by the way, one of my big regrets is I've never hit a $25 denomination royal flush, but I've hit, you know, a $25, you know, double diamond jackpot. And it was a big pain in the ass for everybody to get paid because you had to go through gaming, get a score on property and all this bullshit. But I had no problem. And, but according, but according to everybody, you know, they, it took them so long to get paid that the entire team would have lost if not for my double diamond hit. So that was kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. I would have thought the, if you're playing video poker, the best game is, is, is $5, uh, bonus. But that, poker that was, that was locked up by, uh, Two guys. There were one or two machines that were locked up like a day in advance. And, uh, and you know, $5 double-double would not have been a bad choice. Oh, no, no, no. That's, that would be my choice, but it was locked up. And it was in one of the two – well, I guess I kind of knew both of them. I, one guy I had met, and the other guy, I, I, he was a friend of a bunch of friends. You know, I guess I met him there. But he was ex-gaming. He used to work for gaming, actually. Oh, in Mississippi. Uh, he worked for gaming and became an, an AP. Yeah, yeah. He was. Uh, I had a. I had a. I had a friend. He was. Uh, he was kind of old, and uh, he he was a single deck specialist, which you could be in the you know in early two thousands. And he was. And they moved into like uh, you know the carnival games, and he was partners with this guy for several years. Um, you know, I don't want to give his name, but he you know, he worked for for Mississippi Gaming. So he knew how it worked. Um, yeah, you know, well, that'd be a friend. valuable teammate to have. <laughs> yeah. It's, so, yeah, this, this guy, I, I guess I met him there, and he was with a, a friend that now lives out west, you know, outside of Nevada. But but it was it was pretty cool. You know what I mean? 
like I said, you know, it's like you play like right things and you're a loser or you're a lucky loser, you know, and that's what you want him to see is, oh, he's a real loser, but he got lucky. So. All right. Harris and Tunica. When resorts bought it out. Okay. So Harris and Tunica, I think there's been like three different freaking Harris in different places in Tunica. But the one that was next to Sam's Town and they moved to another location, they had um, resorts bought them out. And if people remember the Game King $25 blackjack is like 99.98 or whatever off the top. Something where you know that you would want to hit like ace, 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 seven, or, you know, I forget. You hit like a hard 17 with three aces. And uh, they had no cash back because it used to be Harris. And then it was resort. And like, shit, they're going to have some kind of cash back. So we had going with my wife and my friend that, oh, by the way, only did, you know, hooks and not slots. And we were playing because we're like, and, and then we were playing it because they, they had like point one cash back and they had point four the first month. We're like, cool, point four cash back, even game, blackjack, easy peasy. So, um, and then on top of it, there's other way seven, like Mustangs are like, yes. And by the way, not to spoil it, but another, my second regret is I've never won a car. So like any team fight me, you know, or, he, or I can fight him or whatever. Cause any team's won a lot of cars. But, um, so, so we're playing and the machine is like a, you know, $25 thing. I don't know. You're playing what? 125, 250 hand. But it was at the point where if you split, you can't double both because that would be a hand pay and you get a 3% tax in, in the in Mississippi. So you'd only, you know, if you split, you could only double one hand. And, but they had the thing where they had a max, they had tickets, we had a maximum of a thousand dollars machines. It's always spinning out tickets. You're always putting them back. You got like a stack of tickets, you know, cashing in tickets. This looks like crazy. And then after a couple of days, my friend, he was playing like nickel craps for whatever reason. He used to look like cover because we're there like all day. And, um, and I figured we are like, you know, the total slot action casino, we're like five times it. Yeah. And I'm looking over and he gets 86 while I'm playing. I'm like, oh, well, geez, I guess I should probably leave. So I cash out. And I'm walking out, and they're like, oh, sir, stop, stop, stop. And I'm like, yeah, 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 whatever, see you later. I just walk out to my car, and then my wife calls, you know, and I just leave. Because it's like, you know, I'll get someone else to cash tickets. Then my wife calls me, she's like, oh, she's at, uh, she's at the hotel, and against the law, they're kicking her out of the hotel. I'm like, oh, fuck. It's not, you know, it's not worth whatever. So I got to go, I got to turn the car around and pick her up. And this is like 2001-ish or something, or 2002 and the only new car I've ever bought in my life was a PT Cruiser because they're so freaking cool when they came out. And they had that hatchback, and my wife put her stuff in the hatchback, and they 86 me through like through the hatchback, through the end. They yelled in the 86 shit. And I was like, yeah, whatever. It's like no hablo and glass or whatever. And, um, and I'm like, okay, that's resorts. So then they, they've got the other resorts in in Vegas, and I'm like, well, we'll find out what happens. Because what's the worst? What's the worst that can happen? They're not going to freaking arrest you. They'll just say, yeah, go away. So resorts in what? Vegas. You mean Atlantic City? Yeah. No, no, Vegas. They had after Las Vegas Hilton. Wasn't it resorts? Now it's something else. Right. N- now it's Westgate. Um, yeah, and, what, it was it LBH was, for a while. Yeah, it was LBH they were for a while. By, they were owned by, by resorts. Okay. Oh, after, okay. Yeah. Which, but they were yeah, called LVH. Yeah. So I go in there and I'm like, I don't know. They had some like dollar video poker in the sports book we all used to play for, for coupons or whatever. And I'm playing it. And I'm like, there's like this, this security guard like 20 yards away. I'm like, I'm just being fucking paranoid, right? And it's like, cause you know, you're, you're, you're paranoid. You're a gambler. So <clears throat> I'm playing and then I'm like, then I just take my ticket, you know, and cash my coupon. And I go to the cage and he's following me and I'm like, what the hell, you know? And then it's like, and then I, and then I just leave and, you know, they kind of follow me to the exit. I'm like, okay. And it's like, but they didn't do anything. And then I came back another later and there's no, there's no casino guard. So they must've thought that he was an idiot. You know, they're idiots. And so what I have is we had this friend that lived in Memphis 
and he went to some party with the, the surveillance thing. He gave him shit. He goes, hey, what's wrong with you? You're just like kicking up like high rolling people playing fucking video blackjack. 86 people playing a video blackjack. You know, and the guy goes, oh, no, those are drug dealers. It's like, you're idiots. You know, because a lot of people, casino people are idiots. This guy, you know, you hit on before, he would have obviously known. They've got our social security number. We're giving you cash. How can, you know, how are we laundering money? But they didn't check us out because they thought we were, we were APs. They thought we were, we were drug dealers, morons. And then the annoying thing is that I thought that, like, I did the, my, my guess is that, we, you know, between the three of us, our EV is one and a half freaking Mustangs. And, you know, I, I should have, like, sued or whatever, but we never went in for the drawing, and we didn't win any Mustangs because they probably called our freaking name. We weren't there, but it were 86, and, you know, I, I wasn't aggressive enough to do it. And, you know, now, you know, I, I would have done it because I really want a car. But uh, but at the time, you know, we, we, didn't, we didn't win any Mustangs because we didn't go back to the casino. Because you were 86. Yeah. 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 That's a good reason not to go back next week for a drawing. Yeah, but, but, but you could have, you could have gotten some kind of, we could have, we could have sued and, cause we, we are, our drawings were not, and this is, pre, must be present to win, but they've 86 us. I'd assume if I talked to a lawyer that this is shitty and I've earned something, you know what I mean? And I could have maybe had a lawyer be my representative there or something like that. I could have had someone be my, you know, in case they called me, no, I'm not Jeff Rugerman, but here I'm a lawyer, here's my thing, I'm collecting it for him, but I didn't think of that at the time. And I, I was, to be honest, I, I was paranoid about me as an AP, and, you know, uh, that was a misjudgment, but whatever, you know, can't go back and change the past. I'm curious as to whether or not you could have had a lawyer pick it up. I would have. I'd be well, now surprised. we've got a, well, we have a standing Next question time. for Bob Narcissian now, huh? Yes, we have a right. Standard, a standing yes, question do. next time he's on the air. Yeah. Yes, and it, it will be on the list. Uh, <laughs> good. Uh, will he know you as Math Boy rather than whatever elder name you use? Uh, I don't know. I've met well, him a couple times. We, we, have, we, have a, we have a mutual friend, Stuart, that he's uh, closer friends with. But, uh, you know, yes. I've met him a couple times. I don't, I don't know if he can remember me, not to be honest. You know. Okay. I never needed them personally, thank God. So, yeah. Yeah, Nersessian on the air has mentioned Stewart several times with respect to a um, Sahara casino. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's, what, that's one of the classics. Uh, that and the, back in oh, the, spin, spin the big six wheel, you know. <laughs> back in the early 90s. So. All right. Um, once you were playing double deck at the Tunica Fitzgerald. <laughs> You had, yeah. it, so splitting sevens, what happened? So, give a little background. We actually had cover to play blackjack. This Tunico, this picture was so freaking stupid. They had like a 50 play, whatever, video poker machine, nine six, and they would have your results be like roughly 40% negative of your coin in, and you played three seconds. So, you play an hour, you put in 6,000, they'd have like, you know, 600 times four, you know, $2,400 loss. So you'd get like a $5,000 loss or something that they thought you were a machine player. Well, what we figured is you're freaking invulnerable on counting cards on blackjack because you just lost five grand on the slot. So we would play double deck at, at Fitzgerald. And they, so I've got like, I don't know, double split, split sevens. I had two hands of 300, split sevens. You've got an ace on one of them. And it's either, I don't know, they had this thing where I had to double. But what kind of idiot doubles a soft 18, you know? So the, de the dealer was thinking, she just went right past me. And I lost, and I, you know, I, I got pissed off. I lost my temper. I, you know, I, I, I lose my temper from time to time, or I have in the past. And, uh, and I, I was really pissed off. I'm yelling. And they're like, oh, we can't back up the cards. Like, the dealer made a mistake. My part, my, you know, my bet was out there before she would ever, you know, so I lost it. 900. Well, I, I don't think it's because I lost like $600. So I'm like pissed off. And I go downstairs and the, you know, they had like kind of a weird garage downstairs and they had like the trash can on. I fucking kick it and it goes like halfway across, whatever. And I get in my car and they got like this three wheeled security guard thing behind me because I was like being a jackass because I was, I just lost my temper. 
they're following me. And they do the typical casino, stop, or we'll yell, stop again. And they follow me like five or ten miles or whatever out, and they finally turn away. And uh, I was like, I thought, whatever. Then I had this friend, uh, this friend from Mississippi who said, hey, I told the story. And he goes, two weeks ago, he goes, hey, Jeff, I saw the, the trash can down there. It had a big dent in it from where you kicked it. And then, uh, like, a month later, they turned it into, like, a metal trash can. So I, I affected the trash can policy at uh, the Cheryl's Cutica. So did they actually bar you, or, or, or they were – I mean, why were they following you? Because I was a jackass. I just got pissed off. I don't know. I got 86. Oh, I didn't get 86. I got, like, backed off there, like, three times. They would, they would like change their system and forget about you. And then they had a trackable shuffle and they'd come back and have a single deck. And they were like kind of, kind of a, this girl sneak was really a messed up casino. They would, they would forget about you, come back. They'd like you, you know, and they had like a lot of different shit to play. So, uh, but yeah, cause I was like screaming and or whatever. Cause I just, geez, like it's so obvious. I, put my fucking like double out and then she goes right past it. It's like how, and there's a camera, look at the camera, you know, but then they go, we're going to look at the camera because we can't pick up cards. You know, they're just giving the stupid casino line. And you know, if you had, if they had, if I had actually won, you know, they might've gone back or done something stupid, but yeah, I lost my temper and uh, I was like, I was being a jackass and uh, that's why they came after me. <laughs> they wanted to just probably call me down, but whatever. All right, we got lots of more stories about uh, when Math Boy was a jackass. So um, <laughs> first, we're going to have some commercials. The South Point has more than 10,000 gains, returning more than 99%. This is more than anyone else has. In January, Monday through Thursday, there's a $500,000 spin-to-win promotion. Play $500 coin in in slots or $2,000 in video poker, and you spin a virtual wheel on your machine. All prizes are free play or points, which may be turned into cash or free play. Free, free play ranges from $5 to $100. Point trades from $2,500, worth $7.50, to 100,000 points, worth $300. Last year, they averaged $12 each time which means 0.6%, you add it to the normal 0.3% uh, club, and you have a 0.9% uh, free play four days a week up to $8,000 coin in per day. The third week of the free video poker classes, Tuesday, January 22nd at noon in the Silverado Lounge, is 9-6 double-double bonus quick quads Wheel Poker. Quick Quads is a game where you pay an extra coin per line to play, but you get credited with four of a kind, or which are quads, whenever you end up with three of a kind, and the other two cards end up to the rank of the trips, such as 444-Ace-3. There are numerous strategy variations to take advantage of this game, and the double-double bonus is a high-returning game. Wheel Poker is a game where you pay an extra coin per line and you get to spin a wheel every time you get a quad, or in this case, also quick quad. You put these two together, you have a seven coin per line game. Um, it's at South Point. It's found in both quarter triple play, which is $5.25 a pop, or quarter five play, which is $8.75 a pop. It ends up being one of the very highest returning games in the casino. At videopoker.com, it's the best place to play lots of games. If you sign up for the gold membership, $8.95 a month or $79.95 a year, this allows you to get corrections on most of the game. The game of the week is Face Card Frenzy. You may play this game anywhere from 6 coins per line to 10 coins, with the odds increasing as you increase your bet. In this game, full houses and quads, including jacks, queens, kings, and aces, return a lot more than usual. To make the math work, all pay schedules are bumped up, meaning that you need an entirely new strategy to play this game. In addition, no games in this variety 
were we at least returning more than 99%. So it would take one heck of a promotion to make this game worth learning. All right, we're back to uh, talking with Math Boy. We've been talking about promotions, and we have more promotions to talk about, but let's change subjects and talk about a few other things as well. Perhaps we'll get back to promotions on later. Now, you have retired. Um, any regrets on that? At one point, no. somebody quoted you saying, retiring is like cutting off an arm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I heard like Arnold Schneider say at one point, you know, gamblers never retire. They keep on looking to stop him. I told a friend, you know, it was really tough that, you know, but I was doing kind of two things. I did my, you know, I kind of used my money to have kind of an active investment after this. And I was, and I was gambling and I was doing both from half ass. And, but you've got like 15 years of making your identity as a gambler and programming yourself with, I, you know, with gambler memes and, and it was very difficult to just, you know, call up my partner in time and just say, I quit, you know, sorry, that that's it. So it, it was difficult. But after that, I, I have no regrets. I don't want to go back. I mean, you know, I, I don't mind talking about it. It's, uh, it's kind of neat that, you know, in a weird thing, I'd live in a non-gambling town so I could tell people that I was a gambler. And, uh, you know, I that's cool. And, you know, as an aside, Everybody, when you tell them you're a professional gambler, they got one of three, you know, reactions. One is that you're evil. That's like one, pe that's like maybe five, ten percent of people. And then everybody else goes, oh my God, it's the coolest thing in the world. You know what I mean? And then you've got the people who goes, oh yeah, that's great. And they don't believe you. And that's the vast majority of people. And I kind of figure it's like telling them you're an astronaut, you'd have the same result, except for the evil part. Most people just don't believe you. I mean, if you don't live in a lot of gambling town. So, uh, you know, but yeah, the, now, the people who don't believe you, I, I, you get the people who are like, oh, yeah, you know, my uncle is really good at crap. <laughs> you, oh, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> so, so, like, after I quit, like, my job, I was, like, I was, like, playing, you know, I was playing online in my, you know, in the, whatever, with the cable guy come in because I need to bail a cable connection because I'm playing online. And he's like, oh, yeah, I see professional gambler. I played the horses. Like, oh, yeah. He goes. Yeah, and then I maxed out my credit card, so I had to quit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, I, uh, it's like the old joke about smoking. Uh, quitting is easy. I've done it half a dozen, dozen times. Um, yeah. yeah. And, you know, and yeah, I retired many times, actually, and, you know, I always sort of got dragged back in. But now, this time, I think I'm really, <laughs> I'm really retired, but, um, but, Having made the mistake of like going on television shows and stuff and, and then coming out of retirement, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm a little bit uh, more uh, careful, uh, just in case. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I stopped caring. So I'm, you know, I'm beyond caring. I, yeah. I don't want to do it. You know, it's whatever. It's, it's, I've done it. It's done, you know. You're like OG. Oh, you're not. You're not like a current whatever. So I, I'm happy with what I'm doing. What I'm doing now, you know, people think is cool, and I have fun with it, and that's what's important. Is I, I want some kind of mental exercise with what I do, and I got to. I'm obsessive. I have to obsess over a couple of things at once, so I'm able to do that. You know, it's but like I said, it's an identity thing. You've got you 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 have your identity of several years of thinking of certain ways, and some of them are useful. Like like you know just divorcing yourself from, you know, like in behavioral economics, they say that like a law hurts twice as much as a win. You have to like rip that out of yourself and like throw it back the other way because that's what the casinos want. And now I don't care if I lose money, you know, that's life. And, um, but as long as I think I did the right thing and, and, and there's some things you can pick out of it like that, they're good, but there are other things like wearing a hat all the time, being paranoid that everybody is watching you, you know, I've stopped when I go into like a new a new room anywhere. I stop kind of glancing up to see where the where the freaking cameras are. You know, so I'm <laughs> free of looking for cameras. I'm free of wearing a whatever. Also, the vast majority of gamblers are maybe 30, 40 pounds overweight. And I've I've now you know since I've stopped gambling, I've been paying attention to my health, and I've lost 
uh, like at least 30 pounds and I'm a lot stronger. So, I, I mean, there's, there's bad things about being a gambler, you know, that, you know, it's, you know, I'm happier now, I think. So I, I don't miss it at all. I mean, if I missed it, I would go back and do it, but I don't miss it. So. Now at times you were a lone wolf when you were gambling and at times you ran a team. Uh, which did you find more pleasing? So when you've got different plays, you want to add people when they add value. So, and there's, there's different types of value. There's value like if you're in a card counting team, you've got the extra bank role. That's one level. And then, but I've got like, say, when I was just like maybe everybody in the freaking world now, you're in a coupon cashing team. Which is, I looked at similar to the online on move to land base. When you've got a coupon cashing team, it's very useful to have a friend because, like, if I'm playing Tunica, I don't want to be in Tunica like every week. I could be in Tunica every other week and like have be outside of Tunica every other week. So, like, I would have a I would have a partner there. Um, like I showed with the three, you know, the the three card partner edge sorting edge sorting thing, we would have one other AP, two, you know, guys that were smart but not AP doing the doing the betting and another people, you know, you pay like 5%. So you, I would want to minimize the number of people that I work with. And part of it is that I know that a lot of people like Richard loves the people he works with. He said if he had work with himself, he wouldn't find it fun. And it's like all driven by personality. I mean, I'm not all, I, I never did whole carding or tried to do whole carding because I just don't like it. And, you know, and, and if you're like an ex, you know, the thing is if, if you're like kind of, an extrovert, you want to work with people. And if you're an introvert, you may work with people sometimes, but you know, it drains energy. And it's more what I am. I can talk to you guys for an hour, but you know, I, I don't want to be in a like around 20 people all the time. And um, you know, I, I was more to machine plays. It would be more, you know, like a lot of people like they think, oh, they think they're God's gift to gambling because they knew one, you know, they knew one card poker. You know, and, and I was never like that. I would want to have some kind of other mental exercise and, you know, it just, you'd play stuff that goes to your personality. And you'd, so, so I always played to my personality. Yeah, I think that's it. I mean, the goal is, um, you know, not to make the most money. It's to be happy. Uh, or at least that's what I try to tell my kids, you know. And, yeah, and yeah. you you, you want to you know you want to find the kind of things that'll make you happy. <laughs> so um, I mean, you've yeah, trade off. I mean, if you make like you know, I used to think like you know, like as like a as a thought point of thought. Yeah, you know, let's say you hate being a toll booth operator, right? But if they paid you ten million dollars for a year to be a toll booth operator, would you? Yes. Yeah. But after <laughs> one year and you had ten million dollars in the bank, would you want to do a second year? No. So, yeah, you've got a trade-off, but happiness is very important in being, you know, and it's kind of funny. A lot of people assume that when you're in professional games, you're very stressed out. And, you know, they think that the gambling is the stressful part. And I'm like, you know, I don't care. It's video poker, whatever. Here you go. It's $125. I lost whatever. I'll win the next one. But it's, it's just, you know, over, I don't know. It, it's, it is I'm happier now. That's what I know. And I've got a simpler life. And, you know, I'm able to spend more time with my wife. And I used to have a, a wanderlust where I would get crazy if I was at home 10 days. And now I could be at home for a month and it's great. I mean, I live in a nice city, but it's, uh, I'm happy. And I think I'm happier than when I was a gambler. And now I have the money that I had from gambling. And I was happy when I was a gambler. But every, life, life is good. I have no regrets. Besides you don't miss the secondhand smoke, huh? <laughs> well, you know, that's gone downhill in recent years anyway. Um, but yeah. yeah. All right. Let's go back to some of the promotions that you were talking about. Uh, there was a three card poker team. You had a play at a marginal deck at Caesars. Your spotter decided to spill a drink on the cards to get them changed. Now, well, how did that happen? Yeah, so we're Caesars. Everything's off by like two hours. I forgot exactly why, but you would have, not the exact whatever, they had $500 plays. The, the spotters, like, you know, who's my partner at the time goes, 
oh, I'm going to be aggressive because I want to be aggressive. And, uh, and she like, it's a female. She's, she like badly spilled a drink on the cards because that's how you get the cards changed. Unfortunately, if you're freaking marking the cards, that's also how you do shit. So they had, obviously, when you spill a drink, it takes a, like 20, 30 minutes for shit to happen, especially when it hits the cards. And I mop everything up, and I'm like, I'm going to go to the bathroom. And then, uh, you know, because I'm, it takes a lot of concentration to just watch the dealer and to give directions. you got to take your breaks when you can. So I come back, and Amy's missing. I'm like, I think you're, Amy's at the bathroom. And I can say Amy's name because, after the game, he has been an AP before or since, and uh, she's great. So Amy's not there, and I'm like, oh, I don't know. And Amy didn't come back. I'm like, what's going on? And apparently, they came back, and they had the picture, and the 86 the wrong woman. There are two women on the table, and the 86 the wrong one. So 86 to 80, Amy, and it didn't 86 the spotter. So, you know, I, I gave Amy a big hug because she, she's great. She goes, okay, and she left. You know, and uh, and we stayed there and played a little more. It was crazy that that you know, uh, you know, the wrong person got eighty six, or not eighty six, but just asked to leave. I'm sorry, I used the wrong term. Well, also, but, it sounds like they eighty six her for spilling the drink, but they had no idea that the play was going on, right? No, no, actually, they they never had any idea that the play was going. What happened though is that you know we had personal differences, and the team kind of split up between me and the spotter. And I had always said we always want, like, people that, you know, just non-APs just because the body language is better. And then she didn't have the same network I had, so she had to take six APs, right? Then they go to Bellagio, yeah. and they win, like, 30 grand. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Then they go to Bellagio, the same, and, and they don't, but they don't, but she's like a whole carter, and they got the thing that she was trained by Gross Team, actually. They went to school together, and, and they had this, and they had the thing that, that, you know, she was in the grocery mentality that no one knows each other. So they make 30 grand at Bellagio and no one knew each other in like day or whatever. Then she comes back the next freaking day with all these people in the same spot after they won 30 grand and none of them still knew each other. And it was so like blatantly stupid that, that, you know, they made, you know, they figured out what was going on. And at the time with edge sorting, I know that James and Arnold's wife and other people were doing it on blackjack. And it was so obvious that they blew up the play for that the casinos had a meeting. And they tried to get gaming to declare it illegal. So they, you know, they blew up the play because of, because they knew each other. You know, that's some, that's the difference between going on forever. You all know each other. And, oh, I've never met this person before, although we're all sitting in the same spot. We all have, you know, because just you've got to have the same body language. Because you're doing this, you know, you've got to do, you've got to turn the cards your anyway. So, yeah, I forget what the question was at this point. So, I'm sorry for <laughs> ranting. <laughs> well, uh, back. Oh, yeah, the wrong person got uh, kicked out of Caesar. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't that have. But it was a lot of fun. Well, how did, it was, uh, but if Amy were kicked out, then a civilian's going to sit down and not be turning the cards the right way. Is that going to be a problem? You know, the civilians are a little nervous about big action sometimes, so no one sat down. But when we found a table, it was my job to clear the table of civilians by being, like, basically the most obnoxious gambler in the world. And what I would do is at the time you had, like, for one dollar, they wouldn't have one dollar soup, they had one dollar coin. And I'd sit there and I'd give them, like, ten bucks or five bucks, and I go, hey, give me five $1 coins. And I, and I tip them one, and I take the other four and go clink, 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 like a constant, right? And that's really freaking annoying. They clink, 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 clink. So you're going over a minute. Then, then after you're going there for a couple of minutes, you start to whistle. Just random tunes for like five minutes. So <laughs> <laughs> you just random, random, and then like you drive people fucking crazy. People would like swear at you in foreign languages. But you've got your hat on. And the beautiful thing about a baseball hat in, in people language is you've got your baseball hat, so you're not making eye contact. People can't actually talk to you. So they just get really freaking annoyed and they'll pick up their chips and go, I need to go someplace where it's less noisy. And they'd all leave. And, uh, and it was amazingly effective. It was only once in a while you would have someone stick on the table. 
But I mean, if you had one guy stick on the table, you could live with that. But, it, you know, I would just be the most obnoxious gambler in the world. And um, because I wore a baseball cap and didn't make eye contact, no one could tell me that I was an asshole. And uh, so, so that so I'd clear the table and we'd all come on. And uh, a funny thing was once we were at, we were at uh, MGM and uh, we had trouble getting two people off. I'm like, no matter what the fuck, these two people wouldn't go off. They're at third base. They're betting $25. I'm like, oh. So what we did finally, we had the big player like bribe him. Hey, look, we need like, we'll give you like a hundred bucks a piece if you just leave. And they left. What we didn't realize is we're oblivious. They're one court poker players. I'm like, great. So what had happened is that they're one card poker players, so we couldn't get them off. We paid them a hundred bucks. They figured, well, that's worth, you know, a couple hours of all the youth. And then I got like a friend that used to be on the team that was an AP that wasn't anymore. He texted me, goes, Hey, Al Rogers or BJ21, put this thing up that you got, this, there's something going on at BJ21 and no one knows what's going on. And I'm like, Oh, geez. So I had to like, you know, call Al Rogers and say, Hey, can you please bust that post? But in the meantime, like, you know, everybody had seen it and like stalker had come by. And I'm like, luckily they didn't know who I was. They knew who my spotter was. They didn't know who I was. And, and other people, we were like, all these people in Vegas came back to look at our play. And we had won like 60 grand at that point. And we, I told my, you know, my big brothers to like pocket the, the yellows. And they had to make a fill. And they were like, wait, we're confused. They go, where are all the yellows? And they go, and, and you know, my, my big brother goes, he goes, yeah, I, I put them in my pocket. He goes, how many put them in? He goes, oh, most of them. And they yeah. refilled the yellow. And they, they had us off by like, you know, out of 60, they only had us winning 20. And it's kind of funny because the new dealer came in. Then he goes, oh. And he goes, oh, wait, what happened? They're like, the machine became unplugged. So they told the new guy to come in and kick the freaking plug out of the machine. And that's when we quit. And then we're like, well, geez, you've won so much. What else could happen? We came back the next day and they were like, oh, who are you? So they had like, they, we didn't even cause heat. They apparently we passed all possible muster they had while winning $60,000 and then they came back and it was a good. So that's how, that's how clean the play was is that no one knew anything. You know, um, w- uh, talking about clearing the table, um, you know, we often had to do that as well. And I remember one time uh, in St. Louis, uh, th- this was on a blackjack game, and we're trying everything to get them off, and there are two guys we can't get off the table. And so, you know, we're doing everything possible to annoy them, you know, hitting 15 against the six and splitting 10s. Splitting 10s, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, switching from one hand to two hand and back and forth. And, and um, finally this guy, uh, one of the two civilians, is, is just so pissed off and he goes, I can't believe how bad these guys play. And the other civilian goes, oh, no, these guys are all together, and they're trying to get us off the table. <laughs> <That's> great. <laughs> We're like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, what does the dealer think? What do you think the dealer thought at that point? Uh, yeah, the dealers seem to be oblivious. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh yeah, I mean, eventually they left, but I was just, I, I just, when the guy said that, I was like, oh, my God, you know. <laughs> I remember yeah, St. Uh, Louis, so they had whole card games, and I would just pass through. You know, I didn't want to play it, but I'd go like, oh, I could theoretically play that. I'd just, like, text a whole card friend and tell him about it. I'd go, okay, this is the shift and the dealer, and it's a pretty good game, you know, on this type of, you know, you know, you know on, on, the, on, the, on the game you're going to make a lot of money on. And, uh St. Louis has been a lot of, you know, I've made a lot of money on St. Louis, you know. It was fun. Yeah. And back 15 uh, unfortunately, years ago. Unfortunately, the city sucks. Yeah. I'm sorry? Back, back 15 years ago, you guys got a leaked memo out of Harris Lake Tahoe. Oh, yeah. So what? my friend Slick. What? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. So my friend Slick got like all the details on what you at the, on, on what you need to get stuff at Larry's to Harris take Lake Tahoe. And at the time everyone would go to Tahoe like twice a year because you'd get like twenty five thousand five thousand dollar coupons. And we're and like Slick is so 
cool. I mean, he's older than I am, but slick is slick, you know. And I, may I go off on a slight tangent? Do I have a, you know, guy? Sure. Yeah, sure. So this is one of the most fun times I had. We are out staying at Luxor. Slick was staying at Luxor in TI. You know, I'm pretty sure he hasn't been to a casino in a long time. And he was comp to TI to the sushi place. And Luxor had no restaurants. But we had, they had a cool host, and I was like, hey, just give me a bill from another restaurant. We'll give you cash, right? So Slick is covered at freaking, like, TI, and we're eating at the sushi place. And then at Luxor, I'm going to give her the bill, right, and they're going to cover it. So it's covered twice, which is, you know, the beautiful thing. Just like, you know, airfare, you cover twice. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm eating. I'm like, oh, Slick, I'm full. And Slick goes, hey, the more you eat, the more you make. <laughs> you don't have to eat it. You just have to order it. <laughs> no, I, I'm I, I'm obsessive. I have to eat it if it's on the table. My mom told me to clear my plate, and you know I've been programmed for my life. So, but but the more you eat, the more you make. And you know you know slick. If you listen to this, you know I'll, I'll never forget that. We had so much fun. But anyway, uh, uh, Jesus. The leak memo out of Tahoe back in 2003 oh, yeah. so Slick, or four. Slick got the leak memo. We found the memo, and they had, like, what you could get for different, like, bet sizes. And it was, like, every possible thing. It was, like, you can have, like, daily average, trip average, yearly average for Theo. Daily loss, trip average, trip loss, you know, yearly loss. It was, like every possible combination of statistic you could use. And if you've done this a lot, you know that the loss is the biggest like component of all this shit. Because you can manipulate loss in several different ways. I mean, so now here's become the thing where people are going to kill me. So we had the fuck Harris team. We, we, you know, we went to Vegas and we assumed it was close to the same. And we had, uh, we go, hey, you know, you got to lose, like, I forget, 6,500, 8,500, whatever, to get, like, the 2,500 like coupon. We figured that was a sweet spot. So you'd go in, and you go, like, block her out, $3,000. They go, give me your card. And you go, oh, wait a second. And if you win, you go, okay, take three grand and leave. And if you lose, you go, here's my card, and you play a couple hundred bucks a little time, and you lose. So you've locked in your, like, your $3,000 law. Now, just about every hair is casino, you've got, like, two or three spits. You got three, you know, you got three whatevers. I gave a variance pool to split down losses, so you could you could create an eighty five hundred dollar loss fairly easily. And then after you had the eighty five hundred dollar loss, you had to finish off because you had like a minimum two fifty feel, like the old tag they put on it. And that's the first time I it's like two thousand I don't know two thousand four two thousand five two thousand six. I put on the uh, the thing I said, you know, we're gonna go go to the fifty play video poker machine and play four coins. You can't hit a W two. And we'll just hit the hit hit the Theo level. So we had all of these fucking like coupons coming in. I figured when they had like to say something for Bally's, we would make a hundred grand. They had something that was like, oh, you could do it any Kairos casino wide. We would make like two hundred grand in comps. And they would give us they give you like gift cards, for, you know, they give you like Visa gift cards for grade, Macy's gift cards. I'd tell I'd make a market so that people when people do it, I go, hey, I'll give you seventy percent. I'd like sell them at 75%. I have no idea why people would buy like so much money, like at 75% of me, but there was a market. I would buy like, you know, if they give like the optimal thing, if they played in the mall was to buy iPod nanos from the Nike store, then I would ship it to my mother-in-law in Rhode Island because they didn't have a Nike store and there's no sales tax. And then, you know, I'd, I'd go through like the, the PVD Providence airport and it'd be, bugging the shit out of me about like having like 200 nanos and wondering that out there are ripped off from some store. And uh, it was a great play. And then I remember, you know, we're going like four, five, six months. I don't know. And then, and the heat started to happen. And then I get a, I wasn't in Vegas and I get a, you know, a text or a phone call saying, Hey, they're coming up with like little ID things. And we put a little loose with the IDs and we'd even have people calling for each other. And I had this one person who lived back, go, hey, you can't have anyone else playing for you. I know you're going to have Amy playing for you. The woman that had gotten kicked out of Caesars, who was a beautiful woman. She's so aggressive. And, uh, but so, so this other woman had to come in. And then, uh, she, so she goes to Bally's 
and she this is like several years ago and she gets she's a twenty five dollar drum dollar coupon and you know they're they're in they're in like fuck you mode. So they had they had detained other people, they detained her and they detained her for hours. And she's sitting in the back room and eventually they look at the MySpace page and they go, Uh oh, her tattoos on the mass MySpace page match her physical tattoo she has there. Goes, Oh, we're so sorry. You're seven stars, here's your thing. And, you know, so she and she was detained several hours for stupidly they didn't believe her real ID was real ID. So Nurcessian made a lot of money and she made a lot of, I don't know how much she made because she can't tell me, but we know that Nurcessian made money off of the deal. So that, that's, that's kind of how it ended at the time. Well, good but for thank Nurcessian. thank you for finding that. You know. Go ahead. Good for Nurcessian. <laughs> uh, well, it's also, it's, it's also okay. just mind-boggling how many times Caesar's properties have had to pay out money for doing that to people, and they just never seem to learn. It's it's mind-boggling to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, well Richard is mind. <laughs> well, Richard is mind-boggling, and Math Boy is cursing. We're out of time again. Uh, yeah. It's been fun. We actually have more questions. Um, not sure how soon we're going to get to them, but uh, I think uh, depending on you, your res- our listeners' responses to these two shows, I think we'll try to talk Math Boy into making a three-peat sometime in the relatively near future, although not next week. Um, thank you very much, Math Boy. It's been a lot of fun. Richard, thank you. Go out and hit a royal flush, everybody. Good day.